Pricnenolone is the grandmother of a steroid because it's the first step of a steroidal cascade. Pregnenolone is produced by adrenal glands, skin, testicles, ovaries, and also brain. In fact, in the brain is in higher concentration than the plasma. This is the steroidal cascade. When we remove the gonads and the adrenal glands, pregnenolone remains in the brain. And so, we may name pregnenolone, DHEA, and uh, the metabolite of progesterone, allopregnenolone, neurosteroids. Neurosteroids are produced by glial cells, mainly. <coughs> the action of pregnenolone are divided in <coughs> non-genomic action, more quickly, and genomic action, more slowly. Pregnenolone and acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a neurotransmitter very important because the loss of acetylcholine is involved in many problems ranging from minor decline to Alzheimer's disease. Hippocampus and amygdala are rich of cholinergic innervation. Pregnenolone influences hippocampal acetylcholine release, modulating the influx of calcium and stimulating the gene activation with protein synthesis and synthesis of enzyme involved in the memory process. <coughs> The intrabrain administration of pregnenolone induces an increase in acetylcholine release. The cholinergic activity of pregnenolone is responsible for the anti-amnesic properties of this hormone. In fact, the administration of pregnenolone exerts promnesic and anti-amnesic effect and there is a decrement with age of pregnenolone and parallel there is a decrease of cognitive um, functions. In rodents, pregnenolone has involved in memory acquisition and loss. In fact, hippocampus has high concentration of pregnenolone and in aged rats there is a decrease of pregnenolone concentration in the hippocampus. <coughs> pregnenolone is the most important uh, memory enhancer. In fact, also DHEA and testosterone are memory enhancer, but uh, pregnenolone is memory enhancer at low doses, 100 times. There are few human studies ranging from uh, this old study to this uh, to this one. This study has demonstra have demonstrated an improvement with pregnenolone of the mood, of the memory, the alertness, the attention. Pregnenolone and sigma-1 receptors. Many of the, the pregnenolone's effects are mediated by these receptors. The sigma-1 receptors are intracellular receptors modulating other neurotransmitters like dopamine, acetylcholine and glutamate. Pregnenolone and long-term potentiation. Long-term potentiation is divided into two phases. The early phase, <coughs> protein synthesis independent, more early, and the late long-term potentiation phase, protein synthesis dependent. The early and the late long-term potentiation 
are analogs of short-term and long-term memory. In this picture, glutamate binds to AMPA receptors, producing a low potential spike. This spike removes the block by magnesium, and so glutamate may binds also to NMDA receptors with calcium influx. In fact, the calcium is the starter of the, the synapsis activation, and this is, is the early long-term potentiation. Pregnenolone is an MDA agonist, and so increases the frequency at the open time of these receptors. In the late long-term potentiation, the influx of calcium activates some protein kinases, mainly protein kinases C. The protein kinases C is also named cognitive kinase for this reason. In fact, the calcium influx activate some kinases, like protein C kinases, the calmodulin kinases, the cyclic AMP protein kinases A, and the AMAP kinases. Then there is a gene activation and protein synthesis. And so the early, late potentiation is uh, not genomic action of preg uh, preg pregnenolone, and the late long-term potentiation is uh, a genomic action. In fact, pregnenolone improves long-term potentiation late through its action on DNA. Pregnenolone and GABA. GABA is an inhibitory neurotransmitter. This uh, neurotransmitter is very important because protect the brain from overstimulation, from burnout. But with aging, there is an increase of GABA, and so the brain can depress. And so GABA may um, do the brain sluggish. Pregnenolone is very interesting because it is a modulating neurotransmitter. At low doses, ranging at about 5 mg to 25 mg, is a GABA agonist, and so, and so is relaxing, and uh, as an action, ansiolytic action. But with uh, uh, higher doses, ranging to um, 75 to 100 mg, is a GABA antagonist and so reduce the increase of GABA neurotransmitters with aging and counteract the aging brain's decline. Neurosteroids and neuroprotection 